In the southern Massachusetts coast, a clash of the titans unravels. On one side are the mighty Hell's Angels and their ruthless power. And on the other side are the Pagans, MC, ready to pounce on anyone who disturbs their peace. But one question still remains. Who is king between the two? The Hell's Angels Ambush May 14, 2022, Southern Massachusetts Coast Formerly a Hell's Angels territory but neglected, the Southern Massachusetts Coast is now occupied by the Pagans who have established a clubhouse at Fall River. Seven Pagan members are having a chill out with their wives and girlfriends outside their new clubhouse. From afar, a group of 40 Hell's Angels members are approaching the Pagan clubhouse. With a rush of adrenaline, the Pagans quickly dash inside the clubhouse to prepare for war. Luckily, the Hell's Angels are just passing by, or so they think. No sooner have they disappeared from view than they start coming back this time splitting up. Some block the roads and watch out for police, as the rest descend on the seven Pagan members who now stand guard outside the clubhouse. Blood splashes, windscreens broken, and heads smashed as the Hell's Angels rip the Pagans' hearts out. Literally. One member is left with a dagger still protruding from his upper body. The sidewalk, now fully transformed into a battlefield or rather a slaughterhouse, turns red. Yet, despite this, the Pagans are relentless, promising only one thing. Retaliation. The results of which may well settle the long-standing argument of who's the king between the two in the biker world. But until then, let's uncover the true extent of their powers and help you decide who's the king. McOffin nicknamed the Kings of the East Coast, the Pagans MC are the true epitome of fury unleashed. Headquartered in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, this gang rolls with a fist ready to strike whoever stands in their way. Suffice it to say, their unparalleled brevity is not unfounded. Behind the veil is a powerful cluster of mobsters that supply them with resources in exchange for their services. Top on the list, the Genovese and Gamino mobsters. Their association with these notorious families has catapulted them into the heart of organized crime, the Pagans Network. The tight-knit relationship between the Pagans and the mobsters is a culmination of an extended foundation of mutual trust that began with menial tasks. Initially, two prospects were put through a gruesome initiation. Their earliest recorded task was to brutally beat a trade unionist with baseball bats for failing to vote as instructed by the mob. Thanks to this mutual thirst for blood, the pagans and the mobsters gradually united in committing extortion, counterfeiting, car theft, and drug trafficking. They now own an empire of illegal drugs, producing and distributing methamphetamine and PCP in the northeastern United States. This trade yields them a staggering $15 million annually. Their reach extends beyond Pennsylvania supplying dealers in Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland, and Ohio. Additionally, they dabble in the trade of cocaine, marijuana, and a deadly concoction known as the killer weed. The Pagan's Organizational Structure Despite being the most violent motorcycle gang in America, the Pagans have a democratic leadership style. While the president and vice president hold prestigious positions within the Pagans, their roles are largely symbolic. They don't run the club. True power lies with the Mother Club, which is run by a core group of former chapter presidents about 13 to 20. However, the president does wield some power when it comes to determining the price of drugs sold by the gang, providing an intriguing dynamic within the organization. Not only are they associated with the mob, they have a reputation for violence, sowing terror and fear wherever they ride. Quitting the pagans to the pagans, loyalty is their bloodline. And this is made clear through their motto, live and die, serving as a living warning to every member that once a pagan, always a pagan, so much so that switching to a different club, especially a rival one, is considered a self-ordered death sentence, with members who've defied this rule becoming victims of drive-by shootings. One such incident occurred in 2005, resulting in the death of a newly initiated Hells Angels member. Sadly, the case remains unsolved. As expected, the Pagans Motorcycle Club is notorious for ignoring the rules set by the American Motorcycle Association, AMA. Pagan Symbolism The Pagans have a system of numbered patches, each with its own meaning that members wear. 
A number seven patch signifies in memory when honoring a fallen member, while a number five patch indicates Nazi affiliations. A number four patch symbolizes their motto, live and die. Some members even display the words live pagans, die pagans on their blue denim jackets known as cuts. The pagans operate their chapters differently. They don't conform to the model of the Hell's Angels or the Outlaws, as their mother chapter is not geographically fixed like those of their counterparts. Instead, the pagans are guided by a core group of former chapter presidents, 13 to 20 strong, who form their mother club. The Pagans MC has over 1,300 members and 100 chapters, raising serious concerns about public safety. When called to court, the club presidents pleaded the Fifth Amendment, avoiding violence claims by stating that the club does not condone breaking the law. Unfazed by chapter distinctions, the Pagans MC boasts the title Kings of the East Coast, with a territory spanning the entire region. And they are proud of it. They also have members in Puerto Rico. However, as far as a global empire is concerned, that is about it. The Pagans' growth. The Pagans MC is rapidly growing, but not because of an influx of new applications. Instead, they are absorbing smaller MCs in their area, often using threats to convince them. Additionally, they are now accepting less than ideal members, possibly as a strategic move for gaining power. The Pagans MC are the original creators of the one percenter patch. Hear me out. Initially coined by the AMA, these clubs were portrayed as overwhelmingly peaceful, with only a small percentage engaging in hooliganism. In the 1960s, the Pagans MC seized this label, creating the iconic one percenter patch with its diamond-shaped design and bold inscription. And from there, this emblem quickly became the defining symbol of a unique subculture. But how do they compare to the Hell's Angels? Let's delve deeper. The Hell's Angels. While some details of the Hell's Angels organization are known, the majority remains hidden behind a strict code of silence. The gang operates covertly, with only whispers and speculation escaping their inner circle. Allegations range from illegal activities such as racketeering, drug production, and human trafficking, but it is difficult to ascertain the true extent of their involvement. In addition to their involvement in drugs, firearms, and violence, the Hells Angels have also adopted tactics from the Mafia, providing protection to local businesses and participating in insurance fraud and money laundering schemes. Regardless of the rumors, the Hells Angels have maintained their innocence. They adamantly proclaim themselves as nothing more than a club for motorcycle enthusiasts. Their stance? Any criminal acts committed by their members are individual actions, absolving the club of any responsibility. Women are expected to live by the rules without complaint in both the Hells Angels and the Pagans, MC. Joining the Hells Angels requires three key things, the right personality, a Harley Davidson, and a connection with the club. But it takes a long time to become a fully fledged member. It starts as a hangaround where you're not quite a member but allowed to be around the club. However, this comes with hazing rituals and errands. Importantly, you have to show you are interested in getting to know the group and their rules. If a full member sponsors you, you can become an associate, avoiding the beatings but still doing illegal missions. Prospects are next, with up to five years to earn trust and do menial tasks. Finally, a unanimous vote is needed to become a fully patched angel, complete with the infamous Death's Head Patch. Rumor has it, tattoos are also required. Additionally, the club firmly prohibits anyone with a conviction for sexually assaulting a minor from ever having any affiliation with them. As you can see, there is a lot more involved to becoming a member of the Hells Angels. The process takes years, much longer than becoming a police officer or a doctor or even a Pagan's MC member. The Hells Angels Reach The Hells Angels MC have a global reach, unlike the Pagan's MC, with an estimated membership of 3,600 members across 59 countries. With 92 chapters in the United States alone, totaling 800 members, the Angels' influence is undeniable. Since their international expansion began in 1961 with a chapter in Auckland, New Zealand, the gang has rapidly grown into a formidable presence worldwide. While U.S. charters are mostly composed of white men, there is some diversity among European charters. However, women are not allowed to join the Hells Angels at all. 
Hell's Angels mainly ride Harley-Davidson motorcycles, typically due to a combination of patriotism and availability. After World War II, biker clubs acquired a large surplus of cheaper ex-military motorcycles, which led to the preference for Harley-Davidson. In the UK, before July 30, 1969, when two London charters were issued for the south and east of the city, the early Angels rode British motorcycles like Triumph and BSA. However, Harley-Davidson eventually became the standard choice. So there you have it. Hopefully this video has helped you decide who is king of the biker world. Were you surprised by the processes of becoming a member for each club? Do you prefer the Hells Angels to the Pagans MC? Tell us what you think, and leave a comment on who you think is king between the Hells Angels and the Pagans MC. Don't forget to like and subscribe.